Hi, this is Lorraine with Vegetable Gardening with Lorraine, and today on this video I'm going to show you how to make a really great batch of compost, and I'm going to do that by giving you a tour of my composting corner back here behind our vegetable garden. <clears throat> so I have several compost bins here. This is the active bin right here. This is a bin that I built myself from a design that I got out of the original, I think, 1960 version of the Rodale Book of Composting. It's the best bin ever. I've used just about every kind of compost bin there is, and this one works the best. What makes it so cool is that it's made out of stacking tiers, which kind of lock together and give you some automatic space here. So as your pile gets bigger, your compost bin can get bigger, and then when you go to turn your compost to aerate it, you can just take off the tiers, set them down next to the original bin, and turn your compost into it. And it's infinitely movable. So a lot of people like to use these black plastic compost bins. Personally, I don't care for these too much because they're difficult to move. Once you have stuff in them, you know, how are you going to move your compost bin? Um, they're also hard to turn. So I use my compost bin as a leaf bin. We gather up all our fall leaves and we store them in here and in, in other places because we have a lot of leaves. Um, so to make compost, you need a combination of four things. You need high carbon materials, you need high nitrogen materials, you need air, and you need water. So the pile when it's finished or when it's, being, when it's breaking down should be about as wet as a wrung out sponge. It should be fluffy enough that it doesn't mat down and get real dense. If it starts to smell like, you know, that bad anaerobic smell, kind of barfy smelling, um, that's because it doesn't have enough air and probably because it has too much nitrogen. So high carbon materials are also referred to as brown materials, even though they're not always brown. And high carbon materials would be dried leaves, straw, uh, dried weeds, even sawdust or small wood chips. Um, high nitrogen materials, which are referred to as green materials, would be fresh weeds, fresh grass clippings, coffee grounds, even though they are brown in color, they're referred to as green materials or high nitrogen materials because they are really high in nitrogen. So when I'm mixing stuff together, I will bring out a bucket of kitchen scraps, you know, our cooking, we keep all of our compost from the house, our old apples and moldy science experiments out of the back of the refrigerator. As long as it's not too greasy or shouldn't have any meat in it, shouldn't have any cheese in it, shouldn't be anything really oily because it's very hard for the organisms to break down. So no leftover salad scraps that have dressing on them. Other than that, pretty much any vegetarian kind of substance is fine in the compost. So after I add fresh high nitrogen material, kitchen scraps, and some coffee grounds, which are available from any Starbucks in the country, and really I think any coffee bistro anywhere, we get ours from a great local brew pub, or brew pub, brew uh, coffee bistro place. After I add the high nitrogen stuff, I give, give a good layer of leaves. You need about two to three times as much by volume of brown materials or high carbon materials as you do high nitrogen materials. And then since these leaves are very dry and um, it needs to be about as wet as a wrung out sponge, I'll wet it down, not so that it's completely soaking, but you know, so that it's got a little bit of sprit to it there. And then I will take my compost fork and I'll blend it a little bit. This helps it to break down quicker because it, instead of matting up into layers, you mix up everything, the organisms get everything they need and it breaks down much quicker this way. So after this uh, pile gets built up to the top tier of that, once you get the whole bin full, that can take anywhere from a few weeks to a few months depending on how much kitchen scraps you generate. Once it's completely full, then you leave it alone so that it can finish. You don't keep adding stuff to it, otherwise you never have a finished batch of compost. This bin over here, which is now empty, is built on the same design. Uh, the design for this is available on the website under an article called Homemade Compost Bin, and it shows you how to make it. The legs stick out 
two and a half inches, and they're recessed at the top by one inch, which automatically gives you this inch and a half space. So this compost bin back here is now empty, and when that one's full, I'll start putting new compost stuff in here. The reason this is empty is I've taken all the compost out of here and screened it through what I found works really well for a compost screen, which is an old milk crate. This one's from a ice cream company that's now out of business. I got this at the thrift store. Um, the holes in it are just the right size for rubbing this fairly rough but broken down compost through the holes and it makes it into nice crumbly stuff which I then use in my flower pots. I have a bunch of giant flower pots with my annuals in it and uh, we could also use this in the garden although I generally if I'm just putting it in the vegetable garden I generally just dig it in in, in chunks because the organisms in the garden break it down okay. When I'm using it in my flower pots I screen it and this is this whole bin turned into this wonderful black gold. So the reason compost is so important in the garden, it does several things. It creates wonderful soil structure. It will, it will heal sandy soils. It will heal clay soils. And if you have loam, you're blessed, but it will also help even loam soils. Compost uh, is rich in, in humic acid or humus. And humus is very important because it acts like a nutrient bank account in the soil. It keeps high uh, or positive ion nutrients from washing away, like calcium and magnesium, several others. Holds them in escrow until the plants need them. Um, so high organic matter soils, high humus, high compost soils are just wonderful. It's very important for plant health, and it's really my favorite crop. <laughs> I'm very proud of my compost. So I have a lot of fun making compost too. And I hope you do too, now that you know how to do it without smell. So, happy gardening. See you next time.